Welcome everyone. We're back to another class. Today we're going to talk about sleep, stress, and emotions. Okay. So let me go ahead. Okay. So on a scale of one to 10, I want you to think about zero being nothing and 10, this is a huge problem. How often are you aware of being stressed in your daily life? And how concerned are you about the quality or quantity of sleep? How frequently do you feel your emotions difficult to manage appropriately? There's no judgment here on any of this, right? We all have stress from time to time. We're gonna have something with our sleep and we're gonna feel stress and maybe be so stressed out for a while that we don't handle things the way we would like. So these all go hand in hand. And, you know, the gut, I have told you about the cleansing. We discussed that in the supplements and organ cleansing, how they are related. And I'm going to show you why in this class, more about the emotions and hormones also play another part in this. And we'll discuss that in another class later. But these are the things that at the bottom, you might start feeling when you've gone through having stress for a period of time. You'll start to have headaches, you could feel overwhelmed, of course, um, difficulty sleeping, changes in your appetite, unexplained aches anywhere else in your body. Um, you can have GI problems going to the bathroom, difficulty concentrating, irritability, of course, and fatigue feeling on the edge, restlessness, you can have frequent migraines and not realize that it could be just the sleep or the stress um, or emotions. You know, heightened emotions for some time can cause that too. And not feeling well without the doctors finding a medical cause. Okay, so we've gone through different things like this in our house. And um, I want you to just realize that there's things that are going on in the body that we can start to help here. So with the hypothalamus, it's the tiny little control tower in your brain. And when you're stressed, it orders the brain to respond with stress hormones, right? It's designed to protect you and we do need it. But when we do it for a frequent, you know, occurrence all the time or prolonged, even if it's not, you know, as magnified, it brings some really huge effects on our physical body and then our mental well-being. Now I did list some of the, the things that are on the side, but poor immune function is another one that you may not realize and also increased blood pressure. So some people when they come for blood pressure, I will ask them about stress and sleep because it's gonna be kind of a key for that, okay? And then at the bottom, 70% of the problems with sleeping are related to psycho psychological issues. So 15% of the reason why you're having trouble can be environmental and 15% can be medical. But when we have this increased cortisol levels means the melatonin, which is naturally produced in our body to help us sleep, they, that level cannot rise so that you really get restful sleep. So there's different things. There's restful sleep, there is enough qual um, like quantity so that you're sleeping for the length that you should and you're going through all the stages of sleep and then um, the quality you know, as well. So we're gonna go through some of those things. Now, what is going on while we sleep? The reason why sleep is so important is that this is where we process information that we went through today. It can be emotionally, could be some of the learning, um, different things that we've gone through. So like I just said, emotional processing, it'll develop your memories. So people with not so great memories, they probably aren't getting quality sleep through all the cycles, okay? Um, brain regulates any of the growth and repair that we, we need to happen. We replace our energy reserves. We remove waste and toxins. We rebuild our metabolism. So when people come for weight, this is another key. And then long-term, we really can have reduced cognition and memory. And then we can have immune suppression, 
then we start to be at risk for you know, infections all the time and cancer. Uh, we have an increased risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes type two and metabolic syndrome. So some signs that you're not getting enough sleep, you might just be moody through the day. <laughs> you might be drinking more caffeine, whether it's coffee or soda or energy drinks. Um, you crave more junk food, okay? You could feel down and depressed. You will feel crummy in the morning, not wanting to wake up at all. You can start having breakouts on your face just from sleep, not enough sleep. You gain weight because again, that metabolism isn't reset. And then, you know, your focus and your memory, you can't stay on task or not, you know, just a little bit more complicated there. And you can show signs around your eyes, whether it's red eyes or circles under them or bags or puffiness, you know, those are the things that people mo most relate to sleep. So here's some rules for sleep. I wanna talk about what we can do to, to try to help our body with the environment, okay? So the World Health Organization does declare that sleep deprivation is an epidemic and um, it is impacting our immunity for sure, our cardiovascular, our mental health, our fertility and weight. So it's necessary part of life, just like exercise and nutrients are to make sure that we actually have full health, okay? Sleep is part of the healing process. So we need to make sure and try to get the best we can. So I would cut down on coffee and tea and caffeine, um, alcohol and cigarettes, no heavy meals late at night, you know, in the evening, only snacks. Snacks can be okay because your body doesn't take long to process that, okay? Um, no horror or action movies because it does set your brain into a different zone, uh, your gadgets, and no like hard training, okay? And then on the other side, some things that you can um, think about, whoops, would be to um, walk outdoors during the day, um, set your temperature low so that when we're cold, we actually do sleep a little bit better. I mean, you don't have to be freezing. <laughs> I don't sleep great if I'm cold, <laughs> too cold, but you want it cool, okay, just cooler. Make the room dark and make the temperature comfy for you. Um, do some relaxation techniques, actually stretching. Uh, for my kids, that was one of the things that we found, like the doctors were like, if you do some stretching, you know, like when you do exercise and then you have like the, the cool down, the stretches actually re um, release endorphins that help you be prepared for sleep. And, um, you know, meditation or music, reading a book is really great. So those kind of things. And make sure that you have a schedule for your day. It helps your body set in motion. Um, it starts knowing, oh, these are the things that I do before I go to bed. Like maybe you take a bath at night. Um, maybe you read a book. Don't do things in your bed that confuse your brain. Your brain literally goes, oh, we can work here. So don't work on a laptop in your bed. Don't do those kind of things in bed so that your body starts to relate. When I lay here, I'm going to sleep, okay? Um, so those are the things. The other thing would be stay hydrated during the day and don't drink an hour before going to bed. You don't want to have to try to make yourself, you know, your body's fighting that urge. So let's just keep that out the way. Okay. And then um, this is something that comes up and people have asked me about more and more. So I wanted to also cover this as well. Um, exposure to blue light. Now I recently had a concussion and realized that blue lights can affect and I, I would feel it immediately. So I did buy like on Amazon, you can get some cheap blue light glasses. I There was three pairs in a pack and it might've been like, I don't know if it was $9 or $7 or something. So, um, but I can feel when I put them on right now, because I'm still sensitive to that, I can feel the muscles relax. So this is something that is real. <laughs> I mean, we know it's real when they start telling us about it, but you know, sometimes you're just like, how, how much is it playing a part? So the disruption of your sleep cycle might, um, you know, we talked about impair your memory and stuff like that. Um, it can make it harder to learn. And the more that we are seeing blue lights, it does affect these kind of things. Um, and on the long term neurotoxins build up that make it even harder for us to go to sleep at night. So it's like we're fighting against ourselves um, when this happens. And then 
the melatonin I told you will be suppressed and we're thrown off by, you know, light exposure. So it can lead to more depression. Um, the other things that, you know, there's other health problems, but look at the retina. That's what I was saying. I could feel the nerve in my eye. You can, you know, damage your vision. That's coming up now with research. And then it's also shown um, some signs of cataracts. They're, they're still studying that more, but I just wanted to put it out there. And then the connection, you know, between that, um, they also do show increased risk of breast cancer and prostate cancer. Those two are, are linked. So it's the same, just guy or girl. Um, and then, um, you know, smartphone light can mess with your hormones and, you know, control hunger. And that's leading to obesity. Yeah, the hormones do play a part of your, um, your metabolism and things like that. And then it creates other hormones. So it's, it's a it's an issue. So I just wanted to bring a little highlight to this as well. Okay. Um, again, here's some other things that I did not mention just besides depression that's over there too, but, um, you know, stroke and diabetes, metabolic syndrome, premature death, um, impaired, you know, while driving. These are some things that, you know, we just don't realize, but it's affecting um, what's going on around us during the day as well, kidney disease. So just some things. Um, without adequate, adequate sleep, you do get sick more often. You do put on more pounds. And um, <laughs> that is so stupid. Okay, I don't remember where I got that from, but um, but you know your your memory and stuff, and you're being able to learn and focus. You know, you get you start getting these things. So I guess you get sick, fat, and stupid. <laughs> um, I, thought, I think I might have thought that was funny, and was just letting you know, like we'll just try to make sure we focus on our sleep. Okay. Um, and the amount of sleep that we need depends on our age and some other health things that are going on, right? So in general, it's like seven hours of sleep, but like infants are gonna sleep longer, toddlers will as too. School-age children actually for processing all they need, they do need more sleep than we um, typically think. And then adults, of course, some can go off as seven hours, some can go off at nine. I know there's people that you know are older and get six, but really, seven would be the minimal I would try to get just so that everything has a chance to heal and recycle. So um, let's go through some of that now. Oops. So there's different stages when you first fall asleep, okay? So at first it's stage one and it's a different pattern that's going on. You can easily be awakened at that time and it lasts like seven to 10 minutes just while we're starting to go into you know, a different transition. Then two is when you say I'm in a light sleep, right? Is before you actually fall into good sleep where we need, but your heart rate and your body temperature decrease and your eye movement stops. And then it lasts about 10 to 25 minutes. And um, this is 50% of where we have, you know, rest our sleep. It's spent in this part, but then we need to go to three and four. The, this is the deep sleep phase. And this is what, when we're taking um, serenity and stuff, we're, we're speeding up one and two so that we spend more time um, in three and four. Okay. It's just getting us there a little bit faster and letting us stay there a little bit longer. And this is where your body regenerates and your muscles and your tissues will repair. Your memories will really set in and then your immune, immunity and your metabolism gets fortified. So, you know, it's gonna last 40 minutes, could be a little bit longer. It usually is not less than 20 minutes though. So that's why we do go through a different stage. Again, it can repeat, right? So if we can spend more time in this phase, it'll be great. Um, your brain activity decreases, but the amount of time spent here decreases with each cycle through the night. So the first cycle, let's say you're here 45 minutes, the next cycle, you might be here 40 or 35, okay? So then stage five is where REM sleep happens and um, we spend less time here as we get older. So the, the try, you're gonna try to do 20 to 25% of your sleep here, um, but it can be achieved 90 minutes after falling asleep and it can last up to an hour, okay? So during this stage of the night, um, the brain becomes active, our heart rate and our blood pressure increase 
and our breathing can become fast or irregular. It changes, okay, because different dreams and things like that are going on. Um, and it takes our short-term memory and turns it into long-term memory. So this is where we're depositing into our memory bank. So we want three and four to be great. And then five is for like memories and things. Then we're gonna go through it again. We're gonna go back to stage one. And I mean, we're not awake, but we just have, you know, all of a sudden it's a lighter stage of sleep. And then we go back through it again. So anyhow, this is what's happening and why we take some of the serenity is helping us with those other stages, the last, you know, three. All right. So here's some things that you can do, right? I would also start the night like with a stretch or a bath, turn off your lights, turn off your screens. And then um, you can use any of these um, oils. Oh, well, okay. So for some of these, the top four are for a hibernation roller, but you can use any of these really for good sleep um, along with lavender or serenity, okay? But frankincense, you can see what it's gonna help with hyperactivity and settling the mind. Vetiver is like a natural tranquilizer, stop those thoughts from running. Bergamot helps with stress and agitation and it's a sedative. Uh, Roman chamomile, you know about chamomile tea, you know, it clears the mind and it's soothing and relaxing. Wild orange also stops mind chatter, but reduces anxiety, lowers cortisol, and stress. Balance is for tranquil and relaxing environment. It calms your stress levels as well and helps you feel grounded. And then cedar wood um, is another one for the environment and frees your mind, okay? So you can play with it and see which ones you like best. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is sometimes people will come to me and they say, well, I don't have any trouble falling asleep. And, um, I feel rested in the morning or sometimes they don't, but they wake up at the same time. Okay, so this is our internal body clock and you can see different things that are going on and what it has to do with. So sometimes somebody will say, um, well, I always wake up um, at 3 a.m. I always wake up at 4 a.m. And so I can look at it and I can say, oh, well, you're, it's with your blood, your body's trying to detox. So, you know, it's for your lungs. Do you have any lung issues? And they're like, oh yeah, I do have asthma or whatever. Okay, well, let's let's use some breathe. Let's help support those lungs. Maybe we should take some Zendocrine during the day and use juniper berry. So juniper berry on your stomach before you go to bed at night, um, just rub it clockwise around your whole ab abdomen. And it's gonna help those organs um, as they start to heal, you know, they each repair at different hours, it'll start to vibrate. And so what it'll do is just let that be a little bit lighter so that it doesn't wake us up when we're going through that phase again. It's usually around those early hours of the morning and we wanna just stay asleep. And so we get to the other last stages and then wake up for our day, okay? So um, this is just what you can look at and check if it's your gallbladder, your liver. Like sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I go to sleep, then I wake up at 12, then I go back to sleep. So you can just look at it and see what's going on and um, you know, look at another way of helping your sleep and helping your body, okay? So as a nightly regimen, you could take Kapiba or Serenity. Um, you can try either one and see which one you like. You could do them both. It's not going to hurt. You can also do adaptive and copaiba and the yarrow palm, you know, for your brain and your skin. Um, but your brain might just like the yarrow palm. I found a lot of people that, that like that. Another suggestion at the very bottom, I added this. Don't take your lifelong vitality too late. So, if you know, don't, if, if it happens to be a day where you're like working late and then you eat, um, I would take a snack and eat a snack and take your vitamins. Because if you do it at eight o'clock or something, if it's too late at night, you might find that's why you're having trouble sleeping. So just think about that. And then cut the caffeine and alcohol. It, it, and some people don't know, like alcohol is a relaxer, but at the same time, it, it interferes um, with your, your melatonin, your natural melatonin, and it inhibits sleep. So yeah, cut that out. Um, for a nighttime. So here's just some more information about serenity. This was what we used before we had adaptive for my daughter because it does calm the nervous system and reduces your stress. Um, it helps with anxious feelings and stuff like that. 
but it's really good for your sleep and you don't wake up feeling that you took anything at all, okay? Oh, the other thing is you can increase this. If you start with one and you're like, wow, I'm having some crazy dreams and now I don't feel like I'm sleeping because of my dreams, you can increase it to two or vice versa. If you took two, maybe you need to cut down to one. So play with it and see what works better for your body. Um, so Tara really did study this a lot. They conducted a six week trial. They did further tests as well, but it was double blind and um, all the things that you need. But people really reported that they woke up easily in the morning. And that's what I find too, is sometimes I wake up before the alarm goes off and I take serenity and I wake up feeling really refreshed in the morning and ready to go. So the adaptive calm, uh, well, calming blend, um, it is calming and promotes positive feelings. So really, if you're having a trouble feeling that positivity more often, this will be great for that. It supports your mood and improves your state of mind. Um, this is great for your mental well-being. It also does help with cognitive function. So if you're an adult that has ADD or, you know, a kid, it can be a kid too, but this will help with that because um, cognitive function gets impaired when we are stressed or have a lot of emotions going on. Um, you know, children that go through divorce, sometimes they're not doing so good in school. And it's because of all the stress that they're feeling that they may not put words to. Okay, so you can get out the adaptive oil or, you know, let them take the adaptive. Um, also, when you're moving or starting a new job, any kind of those surroundings and stressful situations um, or divorce or whatever you're going through, um, I would be taking the adaptive during those times. Even if you don't know that your sleep has changed, um, it may not be for sleep. It may just be for your body coping, okay? All righty. Now, the adaptive collection, it was, it's been studied and researched a lot, but truly, it's best when they're all three used together because they do work a little bit differently with your nervous system and communication system. And when we breathe in these oils and we smell them, you know, I, talk, I talked about the olfactory nerve and the limbic system. It's the quickest way to help our brain respond appropriately. So these are some other things that are in the soft gel that are not in the oil that give us benefits and aids here. Okay, so, so uh, scolidium extract, um, it's a neat plant ingredient that brings alert serenity. So like you're more aware and you feel safe and then it supports the response to the rest of the day with any additional stressors. And um, it helps to be stabilized with our mood. It helps us be balanced throughout the day. Um, and I did talk about the nervousness and cogn cognition that can go on. It has GABA in it. So this is um, a quieting neurotransmitter. It soothes those neurotransmissions that go between the gut and the brain so that then we could use the scolidium root to be alert and aware, right? They kind of go together and work really well. Um, I know some things that have one or the other, but since this has both, it's really accredited as to why it's you know working better for you. Um, so it helps uh, reduce the feelings of apprehension and reduces fear by decreasing the neuro excitability that goes on there. It's called like the breaks of the brain because it calms those cells in the nervous system. And then um, it helps the effect of moving the brain and the body to a lower gear when we can really process things better. And so by inhibiting that activity, the GABA reduces the mental strain that happens and the physical strain that's happening when we're feeling heightened emotions. So it's really, really supportive for your body as well as your brain. So um, here again, the oils, you know, just alone, they do help with tranquility and, you know, um, feeling calm and reducing the tension and the anxiousness. Um, the other thing with this is I put this picture here because the web of your hand between your thumb and your finger, if you put it there, um, it has some nerves. It's like a, an acupressure point. It is a good reflex point that helps with stress and emotions. And then also um, the base of your neck um, and your shoulders, like the base of the skull, that little indention that goes right there, and then onto your shoulders, will really help you for, you know, mental wellness. So while we are feeling different things, um, 
it's kind of like we're we were going through a lot of emotions and we are not really sure, but we start feeling fatigue. And then we feel like we're just like not at peace. We're just so tired and exhausted and we're ready for the situation to move on. That's when I would start looking at the quadrant and using serenity to feel more composed, to feel like placated and calm. Okay. But then sometimes we're tired and at the other side, we just like, we're, we're going, but we just have absolutely no passion anymore for what we're doing. We're, it's not that we're not at peace, but we're just where we're not enjoying it, you know, um, whereas you can have no peace, but still be enjoying things in life. They can be different, right? So this is when you need a little bit of boost to be motivated to carry on or to be invigorated and stimulated so that you can continue to get the things done that you need to. Do you know what I mean? Where serenity is more like, okay, I'm, you know, when you can't sleep and you're just, you're tired, but you can't sleep and you're just frustrated with the situation. Whereas when you're frustrated and you just need to get stuff done, it's going to help you invigorate you, right? So one's going to help calm you and help you rest. One's going to invigorate you and push you through and help you give you the oomph you need to get stuff done. And then while you're stressed, sometimes you may not be tired, but you just need to feel at the same time inspired, but more cheery and shake some of that stress off and feel passion, but being more inspired and encouraged, right? Um, and sometimes you don't need to go to sleep, but you want to feel more grounded and reassured um, and consoled. So it's a little bit different where this might be like nighttime and feeling rest and the other one's just grounded during the day and more calm. You know, they're both working with invigorating you or inspiring you, but at two different levels, you know what I mean? So you can play with these and see what you're feeling. And then I'm going to go over some of the other oils just in general and explain how it can help with emotions. Okay. Because the more that we start working our emotions when we're going through things, and I really would encourage you to get the book for emotions, because this is really just focusing on like anxiety and stress. But there's other emotions that go on there. So you know, serenity can help you make room for peace and compassion and be willing to be connected. That's another thing you can look at. And vetiver is great for PTSD. Um, ylang ylang will soothe the anxiety, but make things simplistic so that your child can just come out and play again, that inner child. You know how sometimes it's like, where has that kid in me gone? I just don't feel like I could have any fun. That's when I would break out ylang ylang. Okay. And then cedarwood. Um, from feeling separate to feeling like you have connections and you're not alone. And it is a sedative. Breathe. So when you feel like you're just suffocated with all of this sadness and you feel constricted, it will let you ex exhale what no longer is, is serving you and giving you frustration. And then it'll let you inhale more support and feel like you're embraced enough and um, can make life rich again, okay? It's really weird, but like when you breathe and you feel able to breathe again, you can shake off some of that, you know, feelings that you're having. Then copaiba, okay, for anxiety or mood disorders and unveils any falseness of shame and guilt because sometimes we're carrying around things that really doesn't belong to us, but we keep ourselves in that space, okay? So let the copaiba just chill you out and accept what's yours and not, what's not yours and um, let it go. It can help you to let it go. Then the balancing, again, like balance is for grounding and it can stop the overthinking and the critical thinking, okay? Now here's some other ones. Steady is great for centering you. So this is in the kids collection and when they feel nervous or anxiousness. Magnolia, when you feel disconnected and you wanna withdraw, okay? Um, it helps you when you're feeling numb, and it helps you to become more insightful to maybe what you heard or the situation. You could be thoughtful again, um, respectful of each other's feelings and have a different perspective and let you become more unified and, and let down some guard and reflect, okay? Roman chamomile, it's great for panic attacks, okay? Because you know how calming it is. It will calm you and comfort you, okay? Then juniper berry is great for night terrors and nightmares and helps you to stay asleep, but um, not have facing those, those kind of dreams, okay? Then in tune, um, 
it is also for, I don't see it on there. I need to put it in there. <laughs> I must've missed the picture. Um, but in tune is great for anxiety too, but it lets you be in a happy place in the present and indulge in the goodness of here and now. So in tune is great for thinking, but also it can bring you in when you're having anxiety to just be present. Okay. And not be cycling through different emotions. I mean, different thoughts. Um, Citrus Bliss is great too. I know my daughter and my son, my second son really loved it. It's great just for depression or stress or anxiety. Um, and you know, like in the morning when, I don't know if you thought while you were sleeping, but you know, sometimes you just wake up in the wrong side of the bed, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I would use Citrus Bliss then and it'll shift you for the whole day. Okay. Elevation is another one that's like that, but um, it's great for the afternoon and for feeling heavy hearted to help you really feel optimistic and get to where you can be carefree again, okay? Hope is for grief, but also stress and trust issues. Hope is a really great oil and I love it. And I feel like sometimes I can't get enough of it at, at different times. Um, at other times I don't really, you know, it doesn't appeal to me as much. It's not that I don't like it, but other times it's like I gravitate to it a lot. So sometimes just break out different oils, like stand in front of it. My daughter was standing in front of it today and I was like, what's going on? What are you looking for? What, what are you going on? What's, you know, and she will tell me different things. And so, um, but she was just staring and trying to see which one would actually, you know, stick out in her mind. And then she could smell it and see if it was right. Um, on guard, on the other hand, it is like the protective blend. So it does protect and soothe you. And if you're one that needs help with boundaries, or boundaries from negativity, either either kind of boundaries. Um, this would be good to use until you get stronger in that area. Wild orange is the oil of abundance, and it's great for just depression and picking you up at any time. Lime is the one for suicidal thoughts, and um, it also helps with mental clarity, and it dissipates any apathy. And then bergamot, or bergamot, is for sadness and to regain self-confidence and self-worth, okay? So I just kind of want to go through those things. Now, I also want to highlight, these are the emotion blends. And um, we really just put those out there because um, doTERRA, this, this was what was there. Um, I've had a lot of people get this kit and it comes in rollers or the five mil. And they will say when they were going through a hard time, you know, one day they might want motivate, but then the next day they might want passion. And the next day, neither one appealed to them and they went to cheer or, you know, they, as they were grieving or going through different things, they, you know, moved through these oils and they said it was really great support to have like the six different ones. Okay. So these are just some words that you could have, you know, read through and see. Um, what it could help help with. So it might be courage, might be low confidence. Um, it might be like feeling beautiful. And instead, the top line is is the negative feelings. The bottom line of words is what it's going to help to shift to the positive side. Okay. So instead of gloom, it'll bring joy, right? It'll have you be optimistic. Um, you know, and then for forgive, I like to point out like forgive. My son one time was looking for a job and I was like, maybe you should use forgive. And he was like, well, I'm not angry about it. And, and then I said, but are you being harsh on yourself? Are you being critical of yourself? You know, are you judging yourself? Um, maybe that's what's going on. And I said, on the same time, it's a renewing blend. So it can really um, renew and change your outlook. So, you know, he was looking for a new job. It was something new that was going to happen. And he could be patient with himself and give himself a little bit of break and be like a little bit of relief on himself um, that, you know, we go through times looking for jobs and know that the, the good one is going to come. It's a, there's a reason why you didn't get the first one. There's something better, you know, either the world or God, something is working for your favor and the right job's going to come along. And he really did find that later. And um, it happened twice. And the second time he's like, let me just go ahead and get out the forgive. <laughs> and he mixed it with console. So you can mix these up. And man, when he did that, I wasn't, a, I, I really didn't like either one, but he 
blended them. And when I walked into his room, I was like, what are you diffusing? Cause it smells amazing. The other thing he did was console and motivate. And, oh, it smelled like such, I want a candle that smells like that because well, candles aren't healthy, but you know, it's just like, I wanted to smell that more. So try to play with them and you'll see like, you know, despair and grief. Of course you think of that with console and trauma, but um, also it just makes you feel like my son would say this. And then I saw this in a book and I saw it on another graphic um, design, you know, to help teach. And it said that it just feels like it gives you a hug. And, you know, sometimes we just, we just need a hug. I felt that the other day. Um, my daughter misunderstood me and I just felt like I needed a hug. And later we talked later and then it was okay. But I used the console just in that moment. Right. And then peace can stop worry. And a lot of people like this to help them sleep because um, they can feel reassured and, you know, just bring rest and calm to the situation. So here's the rollers again, and some more things to go along with. I'm telling you, you can find so many different things, but this, this page I put so that you can have some ideas of how to use it. You can rub it on the bottom of your feet to start off your day. Also, before you go to sleep, um, my friend puts peace on her and lavender every night before she goes to sleep. Um, you can put it um, on your hands and breathe it in. Also on your heart, it's really good for helping your heart shift the things. Um, your pulse points on your wrist and the circulation will carry it through your body and you'll be feeling great. So, there, you know, often you'll see your heart and your pulse points um, in the bottom of your feet or cupping it in and inhale, inhaling it from your hands. So let's talk about the gut and your head. Remember, your gut is the instinct and the center for your emotions to the brain and the heart. And then your head, your brain's going to respond to anything that it's getting from, from your heart and your body, the signals, and then it thinks through it critically, like logically, okay? And then your heart, you know, trust your heart, follow your gut, you know? It's gonna send the neuro signals to the gut and the brain of what, what it's feeling too. So emotions are literally just a molecule. It's a trigger peptide and it's just carrying, it's a molecule that's carrying information to another place and then it bonds to that other receptor and lets something react, okay? So we have the three brains. We have the director, which is the mind and the subconscious controls 90% of that. The 10% would be your logic. The 90%, while it's subconscious, it's getting the messages from the discerner and the processor, which is the gut and the heart, okay? So let me just say more neural pathways run from the heart to the brain than the brain to the heart. It doesn't take a lot for the heart to function, but it takes a lot for the brain to process what's going on. So you have more signals coming from your heart and your gut to your brain. And 90% of the serotonin that you need in your body, that's the feel good chemical, you know, that is produced. It comes from the gut where the emotions are processed. So we want that gut to be healthy so that it can make that and respond to the emotions that come along there from the brain and the heart and sends it to the brain, right? So we just wanna realize that feelings are the chemicals and they can help or hurt, okay? When the gut is toxic, the thing I want you to know is that it sends thousands and thousands of signals. This is why we will suddenly have people go through extreme depression or anxiety and have pa panic attacks and become suicidal, okay? So when we are distressed for long periods of time, we, we feel that this is how it's going to be forever and we feel alone and we start to self-isolate even more. Even though we don't wanna feel alone, we isolate. So watch your friend, watch your family. And literally for my daughter, they would say, she can't be in her room for longer, longer periods of time. She has to be around the family just being around others shifts your body and shifts your mind. And so even if she didn't wanna talk but she was sitting in the living room and watching TV or eating dinner with us, it was important, okay? And once it's understood that this is just improper communication between the neural pathways from the gut to the brain and the heart to the brain, especially the gut because that's where those endorphins are, right? Then we can realize it's just like getting rid of a cold and the body can get healthier there and not stay sick. And then you can have hope that this is gonna turn around. 
and then cleansing the gut will greatly reduce the multitude of signals, right? And they will slow down to just like a dozen. And then we can easily process that and it'll roll off our back, right? Just like water rolls off a duck's back, right? And then we don't feel overwhelmed because the body is trying to read and process all these signals and not keeping up. It will be able to keep up. It'll read it, process it and move on. And then it's not such a struggle. So when we are going through these times, we are just like everybody else, but our processing is overwhelmed right now. Okay. So that's all. I just want to share that. And you can share that with others too. And you can help them with, you know, some of the emotional oils or adaptive or serenity. And I just want to leave, and I will do another class on emotions, just emotions, but I want you to realize the connection and our emotions can't process when we don't get enough sleep. All right. And then the stress is added on. But this is what the doctor told my daughter, right? When we use pills, the chemical is placed in the body and it registers that it no longer needs to make this feel good chemical. So that goes down in our body. When we use the oils, it sees that every time we get the signal, a natural chemical is being used and the body interprets that and knows to start creating that when we receive that signal. And a pill is never going to teach the body to make more, but the essential oils will. It's not going to overtake the body, but it's going to tell the body to make more. And then alcoholics go to AA meetings when they need it. Using the oil is, is like going to an AA meeting and use it every time you feel a slump come on or any time you feel panic come on. You can take the pill in the morning and the afternoon only. The rest of the time, you just have to use coping skills. The oil will support the body moment to moment, anytime we feel we need it. And the doctor said, I make a living prescribing those to those people who have not found a better way and you have the better way. So this is exactly how we felt when we were listening to the doctor. And then we were like, really? You know, and we got that relief. So again, symphony of the cells is another way that we can work with emotions. And so you can rub it to the back, neck and shoulders. And then, you know, this shows you where you're gonna use it. So at first you're just gonna put shoulders, I mean, shoulders, you're gonna put frankincense on the shoulders. You're gonna smell it and you're gonna rub it on the bottom of the feet. Then the rolly, so this is emotional, right? Um, along the spine, we're gonna smell it and on the feet. and then you stop and for Rose, you put it and Jasmine, you put it in your palm. And boy, those two smell so good together. I used this when I had some panic attacks and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so good. Then you always smell it. And then you rub it on your spine and your feet. You put more carrier oil because all of a sudden we're using some, some oils that are more um, strong. So you do it at the beginning and then you do it in the middle. And then you use spikenard, which is an oil from the biblical days, Melissa the centering blend, Douglas fir, and spearmint. So it's just really neat to see how we have different ways to use these oils and bring immediate relief, just like you do with the oils, but this is gonna help the whole nervous system, right? You're, love, you're going along your spine. So here is an example of what you can do for another loyalty order. You can get the adaptive kit, which saves money because I believe the pills are 40 something and the oil is 40 something. Um, so you will save money and get, you know, three. Um, the wild orange, cause it's great for energy. It's great for helping you get some sleep. It's great for depression. It's great for anxiety. Um, the soft gels, you know, this copaiba again, is, an, is like the better CBD, right? None of the stuff we don't want, but more of the stuff we do, it's more effective 80% instead of 30. So you could use this to help soothe the nervous system and get good sleep. And then balance is a grounding oil. It helps release the stress and set you free. So that's just another example that I wanted to share. So that's all for that part. And then I'm just gonna share a little bit again about the business. And I'm gonna show you about Fast Start. So Fast Start is a bonus that we get Anytime we help somebody start their either their um, wholesale account 
well, only their wholesale account, but I was going to say we're starting their wellness journey. <laughs> so not either or, you're not going to start their wellness journey or that, but when they start um, down this journey and they get an account. Um, so let's just say you enroll Amy, right? So you're going to get 20% of Amy's order and it's based on the PV that she spends. So if she spends hundred PV, then you're going to get, you know, 20% of that. You're going to get 20 bucks, right? So, um, <laughs> my mind just all of a sudden stopped. Uh, I was like, wait, what? Um, and then for another example is if you, um, if you um, enroll Amy and Amy enrolls her friend, then her friend is Beth. What happens is um, doTERRA splits this up 35% it splits up between people. So the enroller of the person is gonna get 20%. And then the person that brought them and gives them support, uh, we're all supposed to support each other. So they're gonna get 10%. So now you enrolled Amy. So Amy enrolled her friend, Beth. Amy's gonna get the 20% and you're gonna get an additional, not, it's not part of Amy's, but you're gonna get 10% of what Beth ordered, the PV. And then, Let's say Beth brings another friend to class another time and she enrolls Jen. Well, then Beth is going to get 20% of Jen's. Amy is going to get 10% um, and you're going to get five because, you know, you're still supporting them. So this will just be for 60 days. Anything that they order in 60 days, it's not indefinite or anything like that. It's just as they're getting started and you're answering questions and you're helping your new friend who enrolled a friend, answer questions and get them on their journey. They're paying you for the support of helping them, okay? So that's it. And then here's another way of looking at it, right? Um, you know, you're just gonna get a customer. It might not be a builder, it could just be a customer and you're just gonna get 20%. And then for anybody else that they share with, say their sister enrolls, then you're gonna get 10% of that, and then maybe their mom enrolls or something, or their, their, your, her sister's neighbor or something like that, you're going to get five, okay? So it's just a fast start for 60 days when somebody begins. So later on, you might forget that you enrolled your sister and she talked to a different friend. And next thing you know, you got to check. I've had that happen where people call me, they don't know where this check came from. And then I'm like, oh, it must be fast start. Um, you know, somebody you enrolled must have enrolled someone and these will come weekly. So that's what happened is um, she got a check one week and then she got another check and she didn't know what it was from because for everything else you get paid monthly. This is the only thing that comes every week after you enroll somebody and she didn't enroll somebody, but her sister had. So, you know, that's just the thing, but here's a part of looking at, you know, the turret. You don't have to have any inventory. You help people set up their own accounts so that they can order anytime they want. And, you know, if I sample people, I, I give them a sample of mine. I, and I do have like, a, you know, some things I have a, a couple of, but I'm not stocking up everything. I just let them get their own stuff. We get everything 25% off. We will earn 10% back as soon as we set up a loyalty order and we start, you know, changing things in our home and just buying what we need um, up to 30%. So I've been doing this over a year. And once you hit over a year, I've been doing this for a few years now, but you can get 30% of everything that you buy, okay? You get a free website, you get free online training. This is just examples of what you would get, uh, but there's more training. Um, you get member only discounts. So sometimes they come up with things that you can only buy if you're on a loyalty order. Um, there are kits and collections that, you know, sometimes you can't buy, um, like maybe, you know, just the collection, okay? Uh, I'm trying to think of what it would be, but like maybe like the adaptive, you could buy it, the, co the collection and save money because you're a member. Whereas customers, they might only be able to buy them individually, right? So there's different things like that, that if they have their own kit, it could be a wholesale customer, but they, they get to do that. And then there's other things that as a loyalty um, customer, as a loyalty account order, um, yeah, a loyalty order, didn't mean account, but a loyalty order, you'll get certain things that you only can order on loyalty accounts, like the, 
these kits, um, these little mood management bags and stuff like that. Um, there's three different ones and it's $75. And um, you can set it and then it'll replenish until you tell it to stop. But this is only for the loyalty um, people. And the, the kit is like worth 130 sometimes or more. So it's great. Um, but anyhow, th that's just something that's another perk. Um, you do get, they pay very competitively. I mean, they have like the best plan that I've seen looking at other companies and stuff from friends. Um, you don't have a monthly sale minimum. You, you don't have to sell anything if you don't want to. And remember, we have that 60 to 70. Actually, now it's gone up from 65. It's going up to 70 retention rate compared to the average in the, in the industry right now is 10. So interesting how ours has gone up and the average is going down. And then um, we can make a difference. Um, you know, while we're making our income, we are helping people feel better. And you can do this by, you know, an online class. You can do it um, in person. You can do it through social media. Um, you can help people just set up their accounts, get the discounts, get your commission paid weekly and monthly. And um, you do have to have a minimum of 100 PV to get the commission checks, okay? Um, and to start, it's just $35 or you can get a kit that saves money and those start at 105. So, you know, it's not a big investment, but it does have a big potential for income. So that's all, I wanna stop there. And um, if you have any questions, make sure you get with me. And um, I know that's also a lot, but um, sometimes I'll do like an additional emotions class and, you know, go over things slower. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I point out what I know has been impactful in my life. And I think that sometimes being relatable helps you to understand and feel free to ask me questions too. All right, that's the end. I'll see you in the next class.